wanted to first start things off uh, with Mayor Burns, and I do appreciate everyone coming out for our discussion today. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to this community forum. We're glad you could be here today to discuss the topic of single sex swimming. Our goal this morning is to explore how a program like this could help serve the diverse needs of our community. Our community services director, who you just met, Sarah Schroeder, will take you on a tour, along with Frank Vicarelli, um, of our facility and share the operations of this, this facility. You will have an opportunity to see our amenities and how our pool can be seen from many different vantage points. At the end of the tour, we will gather back here uh, to hear from you. We will listen to your thoughts, suggestions, ideas, which are critical in determining whether this program would be a valuable addition to our programs. At this time, I'm going to turn this back over to Derek Schroeder. Thank you. I do have a few uh, rules and regulations up here if anyone wants a packet to see what the general rules are of the pool. How many have been here before? Oh, wow, a lot of you. Good. Uh, good. Who are my first timers? All right, welcome. Uh, yeah, so the team that's here, Frank Ficarelli is our recreation manager, so if he, he helps with the pool a lot, but then also any sports, any youth programming, all that sort of stuff, just so you know who people are. Ryan Kennedy is our marketing graphic designer and videographer, I guess now. <laughs> Drone flyer at times. Uh, so uh, the pool, uh-oh. We can hear you. Yeah, you can hear me, but he wants to hear me. That's Can I move it? No, it's okay. Uh, I'll be loud. So, uh, again, so I'm Derek Schroeder, Recreation or Community Services Director. So anything that are, is the fun stuff is through our department. So the pool, <laughs> pool, playground, tennis, the new playground, or community gardens, camps, special events. If you came to our Juneteenth event, that was me and my team and the schools. It's starting to rain, so we'll see how this tour goes. We might point. Uh, instead of going on the... It would be more efficient that way. Yes. And you all look very relaxed. Um, so as you say, parking parking for the pool is out front. You come in the front way here. We do have multiple types of locker rooms. So you have a female locker room, a male locker room over here. You also have a uh, family change room, two of them. So if you need to have your own space, whether you're adult or with kids, you have that option. Concession stand over there. Baby pool up at the top, which was down, but now back open, yay. Uh, that's good. So that does open early for members here uh, for uh, 10 o'clock during the week. You can come with your little kids for that. Uh, our general pool, well, right behind you is our spray ground. You know, that's open at all times, even when we have our rest periods, which are every hour on the hour. You can still use the spray pad and the baby pool. Right now we have lap swimming going on in the mornings. <laughs> And that's why adults don't sit on the little picnic tables. One gets up, the table almost flips. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so we are lucky here. We have a zero depth entry. So anyone that has any mobility issues can get into the pool pretty easily. You can get into the pool on a zero depth. Uh, we have this giant structure we call it the tree house, which is right here that has uh, water and buckets and slides and all those fun sprays for the kids. So that goes down to where you see the lap or that line going across there. That's where we keep the little kids. You know, it's about three feet deep there, two and a half feet. Uh, and then beyond that is where we call it, you know, the bigger kids uh, areas. We have a lazy river that wraps around the slides here. It flows so you can lay there and it'll take you with you. We do have the drop slides that enter into three feet of water. Those are 26 feet up, uh, coming down into the three and a half feet of water for that. Uh, right beyond that, we have a vortex. People call it the toilet bowl. It spins you around like this. If I was a lifeguard, I would detest guarding that station because all you see is this. Uh, and some kids have a tough time getting out because they were going and going. You have to help them out. Uh, but yes, it's not my thing. Uh, across from that, we have what we call the adults only area where we have a nice bench in the water. It's a little alcove where adults can just socialize. The kids aren't allowed in there. Uh, just so you can get your peace of mind from all the other stuff going on. Uh, after that is our lap lane pool. So we always have three lap lanes open uh, for lap swimming, but we do have the three meter diving board and a one meter diving board as well. So I think that's 20 feet deep over there underneath the diving boards. Uh, lap swimming goes on every morning we're here. Um, we didn't have it a couple days because it was like 48 degrees in the morning, but you know, when it's 65 and uh, and higher, we're here. 
Uh, and those are constantly you know, going on. You could do that throughout the entire day, lap swimming. It's not just in the mornings, but morning, you do have a little special you can get in early just for lap swimming. This pool is very labor intensive. So I worked at another pool. It had you know a lap lane, it had a couple diving boards. You could guard it with maybe, if you had to, nine or 10 guards. This one, if we have all guards up, is about 20 to 22 lifeguards at a time. There's a lot of, you know, hidden areas, not hidden, but hard to see, so you really have to position staff accordingly. Uh, and it does get busy for being a 20-year-old pool. Uh, it looks great, has all the great amenities, it attracts a lot of people, but it does need a lot of staff. So at the tops of the slides, bottom of the slides, uh, you know, one at this side, you can see you can't have a guard at this side of the treehouse because you have to see the other sides, right? It's blocking your view. So you have to have pretty much three guards just to see around that one area. So you think that's three. The slides, the lazy river, you just can't have one because you can't see the other side of it. So you have to have two. Um, we have one uh, for the baby pool as well. We have a couple in the lap lanes, you know, at the drop slide. So it is a labor intensive pool and we have mixed genders that work here, you know, and most of our staff, high school, college age, you can get your lifeguarding at 15 years old. We'll actually take you at 14 years old. You can do jobs like working the top of the slide or the baby pool. They're not required to have a certified lifeguard at those positions. So we do have a couple 14 year olds that just you know, hey, you go down next, you go down next sort of thing. Um, what else about? We are open typically during the week. We open at 11.15. On the weekends, we open at 12. Uh, and what we're thinking about for same-sex gender, we're not going to be taking any of those hours away from the general public. What our job is to make, put those before, or even if we haven't, you know, we'll come up with ideas, we'll discuss, it could even be after. Uh, but that's, that's the goal. So we wanted to put that out there. We had a few feedback saying, you know, hey, you shouldn't take away from the general time, but this is not going to do that. Um, this is going to be outside of the normal operations of, of the pool. What else? Uh, we do, like on a day like today, you want to call to see if we're open sometimes. I mean, the phone will ring a million times to say, are you open, are you open, are you open, because it looks like this, and, and we're not sure. Uh, but if it does thunder or lightning, like in today, you know, we're out of the pool for 30 minutes. Uh, kids can't come in unless they're 12 or older. So if we that would be the same rules, you know, that are on this sheet, uh, there's a clipboard over here. Same rules are going to apply if we do the same sex swimming. You know, how you can enter the, you know, the slides and how you go up the diving boards, age requirements. You know, you can't come in and use your own little swimmies, you know, the little ones that go in your arms. You know, if you want, if you want to have your little ones swim, we have certified uh, life jackets that you can just, you know, borrow for the day that are uh, Coast Guard approved uh, life jackets for that sort of thing. But all the rules that apply to general swim apply to our special events, like we're having a luau this weekend here. If we do this, uh, the same rules will apply. But I want you all to sit here and notice that, you know, I know one of the things with the same sex swimming is, oh, I, I, we want it to be blocked off. Well, if you look over here, the sidewalk is above the fence. You know, so I mean, if we were to cover this up, this person that's still walking their dog, by the time they get up here and all the way around, We'll be able to clearly see over, over that. Um, it may still look a little bit better here because you have some stuff, but we are very open pool, uh, even with the playground and being on structures or playing tennis and that sort of stuff. It isn't one of those pools that you can just put up a fence and say you can't see it. Especially one of the reasons why our pool is fun is we have these amenities, and if kids want to come up, they want to use those amenities, and up there, anyone's going to see you. Off the diving boards, everyone's going to see you. So that's, you know, we just wanted, uh, you know, just to sit here and get a feel for what it would be like. Um, staffing, we can make staffing arrangements to make sure that the same gender swimming is available. Um, front desk staff, that sort of thing, because everyone can see from there all into the pool too. But that's how our pool looks. Are there any general questions about the pool itself before we get into you know, specific needs or Valley wants to say anything? Yes, sir. It's not a heated pool, though, is it? It is. It so, is. yeah, it's, uh, well, we keep it right around 83. All right. Yeah. <laughs> it's not salt, but it is. Yeah. <laughs> the, uh, the assumption would be that theoretically you have the same same sex swimming hours that all the amenities, all the features would be open, or would you be limited based on staffing? Yeah, or? I mean, I guess we, we would do a re pre registration. So if we would know how many people are showing up, so we would have an idea of how many lifeguards we would need. Because we don't have to, you know, 
if you have 50 people here, you can almost move with the people as a right. lifeguard instead of you stay here, you stay here, you stay here. So yeah, we would have appropriate staffing. The goal would be to have all the amenities open, knowing that, hey, all the amenities open, so if you're coming in, you know that, first of all, that that is, you know, people are going to be able to see you uh, if you want all those amenities open. Yes? It could be um, that there's, like, girls, Orthodox girls that are also, like, for the girls' night, need lifeguards, and they have to obviously go to Beachwood, but there are Orthodox girls that are lifeguards that won't lifeguard, obviously, during the swim, but there's... Yeah, it, it, to get it to hire someone on for one day is not something we're going to be able to do. I mean, to work for a government, it takes you know <laughs> two weeks, a lot of paperwork, all for all for one day. Plus, we want the lifeguards that we've certified, we've given in-service trainings to. So we will not be using outside staff. It would be our staff, our current staff for this. Sheila, um, I'm just talking from the point of view of someone who uses the pool every morning. I'm not Orthodox. I understand your point of view. My kids went to Hebrew Academy. I know what you're talking about. I just want to tell you what happens. It's between 6.15 and 8.30 in the morning because I'm here then. And that there are some Orthodox women. They come wearing skirts. And we had some Muslim women too. They wear skirts or they wear whatever cover-ups they want. There are maybe six people early in the morning. So there aren't a lot of people. We are very serious people. We are either exercising or we are doing laps. And nobody's looking at each other. We always say we don't care what our bathing suits look like because we're not here for show. Nobody is sunbathing at that hour. So it is a possibility, not for all of you, but for some of you, to come. We've had a number of women and, and girls Orthodox women and Orthodox girls just wearing, sometimes they just come in their bathing suit and I can tell because they come in the dresses for the locker rooms. I know that they're Orthodox. And they are wearing dress, uh, dresses over or some cover up. And just to, for a point of view, and I'm not advertising for Land's End, but Land's End, I don't know, but I noticed that they have. They have long, uh, long. They have dresses and whatnot for the Muslims and the Orthodox now, in the catalog. Okay. Well, who's going to pay for all these extra hours? Will the fees go up? If so, it's not really fair for people that have to pay extra fees and aren't able to use the pool during that time. No, 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 no fees are going up. You paid your membership fee. Yeah, but how are you going to afford these extra hours and these extra lifeguards? Uh, I mean, it's something we would cover. It's something we would include in our in our budgetary numbers. I mean, it's not that much different than we have three staff here right now for we have one at the front desk and two lifeguards switching out. So we have those staff here, and literally, it's going. To, this will be an hour and a half. You know, maybe so that you start. You have a half an hour before the pool opens, so you can get out and everything. Uh, so yeah, that's not going to affect your but just membership. Next to that, for everyone else, it's the same gender, right? It's not Correct. Like limited to five Correct. people. Great. Well, that's what it is. We, there will be a minimum. So if we move forward with this, the goal is to say you register online. So we're not, because I think the last time we did this years ago, way before me, Never you know, happened. what was that? Never happened. Yes, listen. I'm sorry. It came well, I, and nobody showed up. I just, and I, I think part of it, part of it was the yeah. 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 Ms. Hex, I think it's, I think it's really important that everyone has an opportunity to speak um, and that we don't try to overlap voices because what we really are trying to do is explore if this is something that is viable. So even if something happened in the past that was or was not successful, I think it's important that we focus on the future. The demographics of each book look different now than they did pre-pandemic. And so let's sort of stay grounded in this present moment. I see that you've had your hand up for a while. Um, I want to just pivot for a moment so Derek can explain what, why it would be important that people register in advance, particularly so that we can plan staffing, what it would look like if not enough people register, and um, let's just have a moment for that explanation to take place, and then we can, uh, I'll call on you next, because I know you've been waiting very patiently, thank you. Let, let me say this before I'm remiss, because I didn't introduce council members that are here as well. Um, behind everybody is Council President Alec Isaacson, next to him is Council Person Gillian DeLon, Josh Mintz, and Ali Stern, who just spoke. So, thank you. Yeah, no, we try to do pre registrations for everything. Even the luau we're having Thursday night, you know, we have pre registrations. We want to know are people coming? The worst thing is, 
No. Our free events scare me to death because, <laughs> like, is anyone coming? I don't know. We put all this time and energy into it, and we don't know if anyone's coming. Uh, especially outdoors events, you know, good rain and whatever. So we would do pre-registration so we could let you know, hey, it's canceled because of rain. You know, we're going to try to find a rescheduling because once you register, we have all your emails so we can send you an email, hey, it's canceled, that sort of thing. So we would do pre-registration for this. We do it for almost everything just so we can account for staffing and everyone's time. Everything. Yes, sorry. You're on the little kid's table. I couldn't see you even with your hand up. <laughs> <laughs> We have, that's what we're here to talk about. You know, I mean, if that's something we would think would be interested in, that might help our numbers a little bit. And, and budget. Yeah. Yeah. Two, I'd like to, you know, Rabbi Glass had his yeah. hand up for a moment. Yeah. It's fine. I really just two comments. One is really for all of us to express our appreciation yeah. <clears throat> that the city is willing to do this. It's really, really, greatly, greatly appreciated. It's not something you have to do. <laughs> Another important point is remembering that even if this is done, if being driven by our demographic, it's going to be open for everyone of that gender. So it's not like you have less time. You have the regular time plus additional opportunities to go as well. And that's some people have the misconception like, no, no, it's only what that Jews can go through and get the time. No, there's no restrictions in this country. Are they going to say that? Yeah, no, that's a good, that's a good point to make. Unless sure. you have children of the opposite sex and you can't go during those times with those kids. But there's always general swimming. We are not going to be taking away from general swimming. No, but you're offering additional stuff that's not available to the to citizens of Beachwood. And this is a, a municipal facility. Yeah. There are private facilities that do have uh, same there. 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 So, okay. so the JCC does offer single-sex swim hours. Oh, yeah. It is my understanding that Bernie School recently adjusted their, their, um, their regulations or the rules that are there. 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 Yeah, for residents only. So I think what I'd like for us to keep in mind is that there are members of our community who are not comfortable using what we consider to be the jewel of each one. If there is a way that we can allow more people access to something that lots of other people in the city enjoy, I think it allows us to be a more inclusive city so that people aren't coming and bringing their kids to the playground and saying, gee, I wish I could go swimming too. And so I hear you, I really do. I think it's an opportunity for us to be able to extend service to as many folks as possible without taking away from the general swimming that people currently enjoy. And to just follow up with what Rabbi Blau said, while the, a lot of the folks who are here right now do represent the Orthodox community, we've heard from individuals who are not members of the Jewish community, not members of the Orthodox community, women in particular, I've heard from who say, I don't really feel comfortable being in a swimsuit in front of men. There are survivors of domestic violence, people with body dysmorphia, individuals who just prefer the company of those that they feel won't objectify them from either gender. So this really isn't about meeting the need of the Orthodox Jews. It's great if it is something that more people can benefit from, but the way I perceive it, and I'm just speaking for myself, is that this is our way of being more inclusive and getting more people in our community to to come and see and enjoy the thing that's on the cover of all of our magazines. Um, I'm gonna, you've had your hand up, and then Rainy, and then Adina, and then you. Okay, yes. Okay, I'm, I'm going to try because my English is not good. I it's already better than mine. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have boys, girls, and uh, my wife is a doctor, and she has sometimes time to come with me. So for me, I think that's important. I don't understand. What is the, um, I mean, the, because are you t uh, taking, are, are you going to take hours from the general no. uh, yeah. swimming or is that no. different? It would be added on either before oh, or after. Are We're not going to kick anybody out of the pool so that we can offer okay, this. Perfect. Yeah. Okay, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because that, that was my concern. Like, I, I, I come, sometimes my wife's, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm free now, let's go, let's go. No, it's just for women today. And, and I'm sorry. And uh, I think you maybe you, you, because you are you are uh, talking about inclusivity, and you know that, that that word is very dangerous. 
and you're going to uh, believe me. It's a uh, someone is going to say it's another thing that they're not or they believe there's feel that there's a woman or whatever and believe me there's going to happen if you create that. And that's going to be even worse. Alright, uh, I think it was a um, I just wanted to say, so hi everybody, I'm Rini, I, I'm on the school board, but I'm here today as a citizen, and as, yes, I'm just worried if I should go there. Like, I was holding down this side all by myself. Um, um, I just wanted to actually echo what Ali said. It is true, the demographics of Beachwood has, has been changing. And we see that in the demographics of our school district uh, with the younger and younger families that are coming into Beachwood with young kids um, who look like me. Uh, and, you know, yes, we don't have religious um, policies that we have to satisfy, but there are very cultural things surrounding our bodies, right? Many of us aren't comfortable in our bodies. We have expectations from ourselves and from our communities. We don't feel comfortable dressing in bathing suits. Um, and so I wanted to say that this isn't just for, even though it feels like it today, <laughs> but I will say, like, I've been very actively a big part of the Indian community here in Beachwood, and there are many women and young girls who don't feel comfortable wearing bathing suits and coming to the general swim hours, and I think that this will only add to the experience of the pool. But also I wanted to say this, in the general community, Everybody knows you come on a Saturday afternoon because many of the Orthodox community with your kids, you're not here, right? So it's actually like, you know, we have general hours that aren't catered to a big population in Beachwood. I think it's absolutely fine to have added on hours that caters to people who would like to come and use the pool. And I also want to say something to not do something because we're scared about a boogeyman situation happening, I think would actually not benefit our community and would be a disturbance to us. Um, I don't know your name, I'm so sorry. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> oh, okay. oh, Adina, it was Adina. Okay. Okay. Um, okay, so I'm just, uh, my name's Adina. A couple of things that I was thinking just as hearing everyone talk is one, I do think the after hours is the more, um, desired approach to it because I do think early morning people want to come they want to do their their laps take it seriously I think it's a little bit more of like a family or people who want to come and kind of enjoy it after hours that's kind of a practical thing and the other thing of it is that it's not necessarily what you're wearing what people come to feel it is the swimming with a mixed gender so I think that it's not just saying like well the women can clothe themselves, it's a little bit of a discomfort being swimming like side by side with someone of the opposite gender. So I think that piece of it, it's not just, you know, you have to clothe yourself and you can kind of figure it out. And, and I think kind of to add to what everyone's saying, like, this is such an amazing place. And I also, as someone who, my kids are getting older, and as they get older, they can no longer come and be a part of this. And that's so sad. Like, you know, this year my son, who loves this place, like, is not coming anymore. And like, I would love for him and his father to come eight o'clock one night and swim. Like they would have an amazing time. And I think that that's the piece of it. Like open it up to more people and let the kids especially, and the adults of course, but like come and enjoy it. The other things of it is the registration, I think can get tricky and I totally understand why you need to know it, but people definitely like to come last minute. So maybe like saying like you can register up to noon of that day or something as close as possible <coughs> with making it safe for you know staffing and things like that. But people definitely don't know like two days in advance if they want to come. So this community night. is very last minute. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know. Davis is going to give the ones to kind of sign up like the better it'll be. And I think if you do open it to other residents outside of the Beachwood community, there's so much potential for people to come. Like, so if you say, like, it's not just Beachwood, you can bring a guest, like, that really will bring up the numbers of who's coming. Derek, can you just indicate when people are saying early morning and after hours, what time slots we were in this Yeah, so we were looking, you know, on a, on a Sunday, like today, we open at noon. No, 11.15, sorry. Sorry. So it could be like 9 to 11. 
So it's not like 6 a.m. or anything. It's 9 to it's 9 to 11. And what would after hours look? After like? hours, we close at 7:30, so it would be you know maybe 8 8 to 9:30, something like that. So it's not you know it's not. So I have lights. Plus it's you know up until 9:30, it's still fine. We have lights. Yes. Pink. Right. Okay. Black. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm up, but when someone was talking about concerns about payment, I've lived here for years, and every year I look at the brochure and go, oh, if only we could join the Aquatic Center. This would give me an opportunity to join the Aquatic Center and have a reason to do it. So I think you'd actually expand the number of people who are paying. Um, also, in terms of concerns about people not showing, does anyone know that University Heights last week canceled their guest passes and cut people off from coming in um, because they were so crowded and, and that's, you know, indicates that there really is a need and um, as a women's health nurse practitioner, I can tell you there are people, not just people who have suffered domestic violence, who really don't want to be in a situation where people might see bruises or whatever's going on, but people who have had surgeries. And, you know, I've taken people to the mikvah or places because they didn't want people to know. And to have this and show that respect to people who are survivors of whatever they've survived, I think would be a beautiful thing. Okay, Brent. Uh, so, uh, first of all, thank you for holding the forum. I think two points that I'm thinking. Um, one, this is, way more, this is way more important for the women, I, in my opinion, than the men. It, I, talking with you earlier, you mentioned the high school might be an option. Also, why not, um, if, if, the turnout, if, the, if the turnout seems lower, maybe pilot it at the high school first to see if the turnout is there. Come here. Also, if not residents. Okay, so, so I really, I think, I think it's really important we respect everybody's voices. The reason that the, the, the pool for the high school, it is indoor, we don't have to deal with the issue with the fence. I appreciate that input, but again, it's and really important zone. that we, it's really, yeah, this whole, it's really important we don't talk over each other. All right. Back to the high school, you also have less, less of a staff you need. With the women, it sounds like there could be a much higher turnout. If you allow the non-residents and you're talking about an extra $10 per person, that could easily cost, I'm assuming you're talking 25 staff, what's called 20 bucks an hour, you're talking about $1,000 each time you're doing it. If you're able to generate the extra revenue by people coming in, with the men, my, my impression is you're, going to, you're not going to necessarily get as many people showing up. If it turns out that the pool is packed, then why not? But if you do it this way, you can just do it Sunday night once a week with the women. It's not really much of a it's not really much of a burden on the community at all. And there'd be a tremendous amount of revenue seems like would be coming in from this. Yeah, no, I yeah, and I think the point of the high school is valid. There's a school board member here that could help with that, uh, get that ball rolling. Not me. Yeah. Uh, go ahead, uh, Rosemary. Oh wait, I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. I can tell this gentleman he's okay. next, but then you're right after. We gotta keep order. <laughs> uh, first of all, I appreciate the forum and the inclusivity offered here. Um, I think it would be a great, a great service to the community. Um, I do have some questions. If it is early or late, is 83 degrees warm enough to swim in, or is that something that could possibly be adjusted, or is that too difficult? No, no, it, 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 I'm not, I'm not it's, a good, it's a good temperature, even in the morning. Some of our swimmers say it's too warm okay. for laps. So yeah, yeah, right. And uh, I guess, is this something that would be a one-off? Is this a weekly? What are we, I don't know, I'm not sure what we're We're exploring our opportunities. I mean, we. it's going to be hard to do it regularly this summer, but maybe we can try it out this summer and yeah. see how it goes, and then we can maybe potentially do something next year regularly. But, you know, we're already... Yeah, I used to know how many days were left in the pool open because I would like chart, <laughs> click it down a few more days to go. But I, I think it's a, it's, it's a great idea. Um, I know that at least my kids go to Hebrew Academy and we don't start school until after Labor Day. So I mean there's a long period of time when there is no pool hours. I'm wondering maybe in that period it would be easier to have more It's hours tough or because tough? No. a lot of our staff is tough. That's, okay. that's our problem. Okay. Yes, it doesn't work. Yeah. Okay. Uh, my name is Rosemary. Um, Coming from a Shiksa point of view, I've worked in Richmond all of my life, way past 29 years old. Uh, you know, so I, I want you to know that uh, I grew, grew up in a farmhouse on Richmond Road. Um, I lifeguarded when this pool was just a silver 
long lap swimming <laughs> pool. So I, many years I managed the pool and I managed the indoor pool. I, I really want you to think out of the box with the high school idea. Um, I lifeguarded there many years and it's, it's excellent with the locker rooms. Literally, you could lock the men aside so no guys could come in. The women go in and change and then you go out onto the deck. The same thing on a men's night. Lock the women's side, nobody could get in. They're nice locker rooms too. I don't know if you swam up there. It's just another idea. Think out, think out of the box. I, I, I know that's that's board of ed. You know, I know that's schools, but it's not a bad it's not a bad facility. So, and, and I'm not against. You know, swimming either. Um, but but over there, it, it is very private. This is very wide open. Just so you know, if you have not been in there, they have swim team going on the summer. Go pee and see what I'm talking about. It really and there are showers. There's nice life, you know, locker rooms. So I, I think that would be another thing in the future if you can't do that this summer. Okay. It's not a bad facility. I'm gonna. I got you. I'm gonna have Rainy respond real quickly because she's on the yeah. school board. She might be able to speak. To um, I will. I've heard. I'm here. I've heard all of her comments about the high school. I will take it back to the powers that be, and I'm not. I may be one very small of it um, and we'll definitely provide that feedback. I also wanted to say this one thing. The pool is a subsidized service to the residents of the city and it's kind of sad that many in our community can't use it, right? Yeah. So it's, it, I, I do agree that we should look at other things and I will definitely take that feedback back about the high school, but I don't want a significant part of the Beachwood community to feel like they can't use the pool because it is a subsidized service. I wanted to keep that in mind. Um, can I ask a really quick informal, I got you, I'm done now. I got you. <laughs> I know not everybody here represents everyone who would be coming to the pool, but if we could show a hand, is this, is it that the community, your families want access to this pool or you want access to a pool? Can we just show up? And, oh, and, okay, so first, show of hands if it's just this pool you want access to. Okay, show of hands if it's any pool. Okay, all right, yes. Uh, first, I just wanted to um, echo Rabbi Blast sentiments. Like, thank you so much for hearing our voices and giving us a chance to share. I've been involved with Beachwood Rack, like married children who have grandchildren already of their own were part of Beachwood Sports for many, many years since they were little kids. So I've seen the change in Beachwood over those 30 years and the, as you said the demographic has so changed and I, one thing about Beachwood that I've noticed is how you really have tried to incorporate different programming and different things to make each group that has, is part of the Beachwood demographic feel at home here and feel a part of the community so I think this is a logical next step you know to put in there as part of that that there is as you said, people who are paying into the Beachwood services pay the same taxes, pay for all of these services, and just can't take advantage of them. And that's not the, I, I see Beachwood as such, trying so hard to be inclusive. Like look at this playground that you made beautifully with to make sure that people with handicaps, any handicaps, wheelchairs can be a part of it. Like that's making sure everyone's a part of the resources that are Beachwood and are subsidized here. So it's beautiful. Um, I wanted just to, two logistical things. Is one, there is a part of the summer, every summer, when we can't swim at all. Um, it's about nine days or something. So that's in August. So that's like just a piece, you know, to know so that there wouldn't be any registration that way. <laughs> Natalie is very good at keeping me on track with that. So, so you know. It's not me. Okay. We contact with the local rabbis. Oh, I am not a rabbi. <laughs> 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 But we are more than happy. I know the mayor has a very good relationship with Rabbi Blau, so we will be thoughtful about the nine days. Yeah, so yeah. just because I wouldn't want to test something out right. that week and then nothing, no one shows up. <laughs> it, it wasn't because there wasn't an interest. Um, and just were you thinking like to have it like I liked the idea of the Sunday nine to ten in an evening, but the same day or like two different days of the week, so like people might want to come because that would make more sense. Like if you would come Sunday morning and then come like a Wednesday evening or something like that, it just gives a little bit more yeah, opportunity probably, and chance for people to get it'll out. It'll depend on our staff availability. So you know, right. once we figure, you know, 
as we glide into the last 15 minutes of this, and I know we want closing remarks, if you have something that you want to contribute and have spoken yet, can you raise your hand? Okay, yes, please. And then I'll get back to it. I just want to make sure we have a balance of voices. Yeah. Uh, hi, my name is Lee Cohen. I uh, recently moved into uh, Detroit from Virginia. Uh, so we haven't really had ex much experience with the community yet, but I really appreciate that Detroit has such amazing facilities. And I, especially I appreciate that you're considering opening it up to same-sex swimming, which is something that I would really require for me to use the city. So I'm really looking forward to the men's hours. And if you do it during a weekend, I don't care what time of the day it is, but if you do it during the weekend day, I work. So I can't make it to the morning hours. I can only make it to the evening hours. So that would be my preference. Yeah, I do think there are, um, I know many people, and most of myself would also want during child-friendly hours, but there are a number of women that would very much like to swim early in the morning as well. It wouldn't be totally empty, I don't think. Mm -hmm. I think maybe alternating between, if you do like Sunday morning and Wednesday evening, maybe alternating men and women so that you could each have a chance at those different slots. I don't, yeah, I mean, I don't know, I don't know how often we're talking, the frequency we're talking about, so. Oh, well, uh, you can go next, and then I've got you. Okay. Well, I used to use the beach pool all the time. I used to come swimming every single morning. I can't do that because of my work hours now. Um, I used to bring my children here all the time. Every evening after I got home from work, we have about half an hour, but that's all the time we have. If these hours are expanded, I wouldn't be able to, if my children are grown, obviously, but, but families like me, that get home from work wouldn't be able to take their children because they would be same sex hours. No. You wouldn't have that up. No, no, we would yeah, no, you're expanding those hours so that people can can be later. So I could take my children for that little sliver of time. I would like them to be able to stay a little longer. They were always sad when we had to get out of the pool, but so there are opportunities that are being given to uh, um, people and not available to other people that might want to use those expanded hours. I would have loved to have had expanded hours for my children. I would have loved to have had expanded hours for myself because of my work schedule. I, I stood at closing time often. There's not many people here at closing time. It's pretty empty that last hour. It's dead. Um, so, okay, yes. Yeah, um, but, um, so yeah, so to, actually to your point, it's an interesting point actually that um, this, this kind of conversation Maybe it's about this this pool. I think a lot of us kind of expect it to be about this pool. But throughout the rest of the year, it would be an interesting conversation about the school pool because I know I have nieces and nephews, my kids, whatever, you know, swimming lessons, just to hang out, doing laps, whatever it might be. It might be an also, also yeah, interesting conversation for the rest of the year. Option for the yeah, I know that for my family, I really care about this pool. So, you know, this is what I want to do, literally, all the time. Every time I drive by. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So I saw, I saw wait, what was happening? Yes, Alex, Alex, and then... I don't want to call you Red. What's your name? Marcus. Marcus. And then Rosemary. Okay. I was just going to say, at every pool, every community pool has hours that are restricted for some people in some way. I can't take my two-year-old son to the pool now, but I could come swim because it's lap hours. I know there are community pools that have adult-only hours, which I think is terrible. I don't think we should do here. But I don't think it's some, like, big focus thing to have specific extra hours. I, it, I don't think it's that exclusive. I mean, if you have hours from 8 to, to 10, that's p.m., that's great. I'm going to put my two-year-old son to bed and I'm going to come swim extra. Like, right. There are other Unless options for families. Time. And then I won't. I'll wait till the women's time. Like, okay, you wouldn't have had the option. Right. Anyway. Right. It's not taking into time that we already have that we're already using. I'm just, I'm Marcus. Marcus. Uh, the, the high school, I think, makes more sense in the summer because school's out. When there's school's in session, there's kind of a lot less people. Yeah, yeah. people and then the second point is, doing, if you're doing it at nighttime with men hours, I'm, I'm nervous a lot of people, you know, they're going to talk excitedly how they're going to show up, but then you have prayers, and, and men, I, I think, could have a lot less turn, turnover, and I women is much, 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 much more important. So I do, I do think being as sensitive as we can to dominant times is important, I also want to just sort of throw out there, um, I've only been on council since January, but I'm fully aware that when we do something, someone's unhappy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there is, there is no world where we're going to offer anything. And everyone's like, oh my god, we all love this. That's just the way it works. 
but so I think being mindful <laughs> is, is important, <laughs> but we, I also think rotating times or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. My point is that if you're going to do something, you need to be successful because otherwise it's going to be another four or five years before it happens again. I think it's more important to have a very strong launch where it works. The women, it's clearly going to be a success. And then once, you, once we find out that there's a really strong, um, not, not just like a half dozen people for 20 lifeguards, but you're going to have a really strong showing that the men are going to become, you know, dedicated, you know, then maybe that makes sense. The women teams is a much, much wider need across the community. It's, yeah, I think that's why registration is also really important. It allows us to gauge. And right now we're just exploring. Yeah. And right now we're just exploring this. Again, we've had interest. Um, we, there's seven of us, and there's four of us here. Oh, we were elected by you guys and try to be your voice and bring this together. And this was brought forward because someone had brought it to Allie's attention. Uh, this is going to be done by our rec director and our mayor, you know, as something else that we can just add for our residents. We are always looking at ways to make our city better. What can we do and what is best for our residents? And that's how the seven of us make our decisions, what is best for Beachwood and what is best for our residents. So, and right now, like I said, we would love to be able to offer everything we can for every resident. We are just exploring and trying to see how this thing, how this will work. You know, if it gets to a budget issue, then it'll come to the seven of us. Because the budget checkbooks kind of we oversee as well as the legislation. But the other part is going to be a decision that we get the information, we get enough support. We're going to try it. And if it does work, great, and we can continue it. We're very fortunate in Beachwood that we do have the resources that we can continue to hold things. And as you've seen from how we do things and what we've done in the past, especially with our programming from our rec director, and he didn't mention all of our senior programming, you know, he mentioned all the camps, all the sports, the pool, the luau, you know, all these events. They do an amazing job. And that's what we're here to see how we can continue and grow that. And I do want to say, too, if we do this, you need to help us get the word out. No, 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 it can't no, fall on no, Ryan. No, it can't fall on Ryan. No, no, you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really? So that's where I'm coming from, was we love to do this. Just give us the flyers and we'll get it out there. All right. <laughs> yes, I think the um, umbrella. Um, what is the likelihood that we're. Then, how much of this might actually happen in a short amount of time? Because I think like, we're we we're hoping <laughs> that we can put something together that we think for. If, again, it might be once right. or twice this summer, fine, uh, fine. and, okay, and that's, we'll that's yeah, our goal. Curious, yeah. Like, what's likely? Yeah, okay. talk. I need to talk to our pool manager who can be there this morning. You know, what's our staffing look like? You know, all that sort of stuff. But you know, I'm very hopeful. Great. But again. We'll pick a time that uh, everyone can come to, okay. you know, on vacation, I realize that. Uh, <laughs> but we'll avoid the holidays, the special, okay. all that, I as best we can. I think it's important to let non come, yeah. only in that will help numbers. Well, and it helps our financial, too, because yeah. yeah. it's yeah. not going to overrun our People pool. People will come. So when we talk about inviting non-residents, can you explain what, if, if we're envisioning someone from University Heights can come on their own, or do they need to be coming with a resident? Well, for me personally, it's just that my, I'd like my son and my daughter to be able to bring a friend. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, just, just guess. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, guess. So as long as they're coming with yeah. you, yeah. then that's, that's not a problem. Can they register as well? Would we register for them? You would have to register for them or register when you come in. We have to figure that's a little, um, but it could be a question. I'm bringing this many residents, and it'll tally up your total, and then they have to come here, with you. If we take the last three comments, and then if you guys yeah, want to talk well, about next step. Yeah. Eric, we would not be adjusting our guest policy. Is that what you're saying? No. So what that means is, sorry, what that means is if you were a random resident of a non beachwood community and you wanted to come here all by yourself, you would not be allowed to come in. You have to be either a resident of Beachwood or accompanied by a resident. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's very important and we're yeah. trying to buy that at all times. Yes. Hi, my name is Joyce. Um, I just wanted to say that um, as a comment, I've done that separate swimming at JCC and I used to also be a um, swim at the high school and invariably they were like the best kept secrets and all of a sudden I couldn't find a lane you had to have four people in the same it was it was so discouraging how how 
the availability of the lanes disappeared at the high school for me, even when it was co-ed, and at the, um, at the JCC, forget it. I, I gave up my membership because I could never get a lane to the limited lanes that they had for all the women who were interested. So I just wanted to share that as soon as you institute something like this, I really feel that the, the popularity will be very high, just from my, from my spattering of, 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 of experience. Yes, yes. And that sort of leads to my question is for the communities that surround Beachwood that have implemented a program like this, are we in communication with them about sort of best practices and yes. maybe coordination of schedules to and ensure dates. that we're not yes, overlapping? Yes, yeah, for sure, yeah. for sure. We've been in touch with them. Last question. As a resident of Beachwood, um, it has been my observation that we always try to do things really, really well. And it saddens me to know that Cleveland Heights and University Heights put this all together before we did, and we're sitting there <laughs> arguing whether this can work. So, nice. all right. I mean, I guess you know. For, I appreciate everyone's feedback before the mayor uh, chats. You know, um, again, my only concern is putting the effort, getting the staff, getting it together and five people showing up. So if, when, we, when we get together and try to finalize all this stuff and get the word out. We'll get the people, don't worry. You get me the people. And if you want to take some of these names and call oh, people that are We got these, that's why we got your name. So when we decide, you know, if we're, going, if we're able to do it this year and this is the days and times, we'll email you. We can even attach the flyer that you could forward to your friends, that sort of thing with all the particulars. So make sure if you haven't already signed in, there should be a couple of pages there you can do so. Um, but again, I appreciate you coming out on a Sunday morning for this in the rain. <laughs> Hasn't rained in what, a while here? In <laughs> uh, it's about getting wet. Yes, yeah. yeah. So By the way, it usually, you do it usually rains so during the men's hours. <laughs> yes, so always. So all right, right. So, right. so here, again, Derek has taken a lot of what I was going to say. Thank you all for coming this morning. Make sure that you sign in. We recorded this. We're going to post this, I don't know, at some point this week, I think. And let other people know to watch this. There'll be a place where you can comment about this, whether it's you commenting or letting other people commenting. Whether you're for this, against it, indifferent about it, please, we need the feedback. Um, and we know, as it's been said, we can't make everybody happy. We do our best to try to appease everybody. Um, in some sense, obviously, if, we, if we're talking about doing this, yes, we're going to extend hours either in the morning or in the evening, and that's not going to make everybody happy. And some people like night swimming um, and like the lights on, if that's what's going to happen. It's, you know, we're at the longest time of the year right now, and it's, it's sad. The days are starting to get shorter. I'm not I know. Sorry. <laughs> uh, but, but nonetheless, we're here. You can, you can please give us that feedback. That's really important. So, again, if you know other people, again, for this or against this, and give us the feedback. So thank you all for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.